Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the stock markets, its origin and some of the key players in the stock market. So let's get right into it. The stock markets came into existence when countries began trading with each other. Its existence in one form or the other dates back to the 1500s. In those days, no physical markets existed and buyers and sellers met at coffee houses to exchange goods and services. These later, over the course of hundreds of years, evolved into the modern stock market we see today. Traders sailed to the east in the 1600s to find goods that they can trade back home. These were daring expeditions as traders and ship owners had to deal with pirates and robbery. To mitigate the risk, these merchants brought in investors to fund their voyages and return for a part of their profits. Since then, we have come a long way and the London Stock Exchange in 1773 became the first official stock exchange. Due to regulations, London Stock Exchange could not take off right away. The New York Stock Exchange followed and was created in 1817 and it traded stocks since its very first day. Today, stock markets can be found around the world and there is no denying the global importance of stock markets. Virtually every country in the world has its own stock market. Here are the top 10 ranked by total market capitalization. Leading the list is the New York Stock Exchange and the total value of the companies traded in the New York Stock Exchange is estimated to be around $28.5 trillion as of June 30th, 2018. Investing in great businesses is an incredible way to beat inflation and generate passive income as discussed in my first video. Stock markets makes investing accessible to investors in the most efficient and convenient way. Just like the way we go to the nearby big box stores to shop for our daily needs, investors go shopping in stock markets for ownership in public companies. Shares of companies are bought and sold in the stock market and unlike the past, transactions can be made via the internet without physically heading to the stock market. Now, access to the markets is through a registered intermediary called the Stock Broker. The Stock Broker provides you the platform and necessary tools to transact in the markets once you open an account with them. The stock market is one of the most regulated industries in the world and this is mostly because of the impact it can have on the economy and the lives of the people. The primary regulator in the US is the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC. The SEC overlooks the US stock exchanges and any organization connected with the selling of securities. The next level is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority or FINRA which regulates brokers and brokerage firms. Does this mean that there is no room for fraud? No. Naming a few scams where companies used loopholes in accounting practices for cooking up financial statements, inflating revenues, mishandling funds and misleading its investors for many years. However, you can feel reasonably comfortable if you use some common sense about who you do business with. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Most great companies that we see today had humble beginnings. They start as an idea and evolve over the course of several years from a startup to a publicly traded company. To understand this concept better, let's get a little deeper and break down the evolution of a company into seven stages. Pre-seed funding or the bootstrapping stage. During this stage, founders or owners mostly use their own funds to get the operations off the ground. Seed funding or the product development stage. Seed funding follows the pre-seed funding stage. Majority of startups fail because they run out of capital during the bootstrapping stage which makes seed funding critical to keep the business stay afloat. Investors take a huge risk by investing in these businesses and hence require equity or ownership for their invested capital. Funds raised during this stage are used to cover product launch cost, marketing costs and initial hiring. Potential investors at this stage include friends, family and angel investors. Series A funding. 
This stage is the first round of venture capital financing. Majority of venture capital comes from professionally managed public or private firms. The startup involved by now would have a product and a customer base with consistent revenue flow. Funds raised during this stage is used to optimize the service and offerings of the company. Series B Funding By now, startups have proven themselves in front of their investors that they can achieve success at a larger scale. This stage assists further expansion by providing funding for market reach activities, setting up operational teams such as marketing, business development, and customer success. Series B funding accelerates further growth so that business can meet and exceed consumer demand and also keep up with competition. Series C funding Startups that engage in Series C funding are well established and does not find any trouble in finding investors. Investors are happy to invest as the operations are less risky and investors are more likely to get a good return. Hedge funds, investment banks and private equity firms come on board by investing a significant amount of money to secure their positions as leading investors. Series D Funding Startups require this stage only if they are looking to raise funds for a special situation like a merger. This stage may also be required if a startup was unable to achieve its growth milestones with prior funding rounds. IPO or Initial Public Offering Startup now aspires to go international. To accomplish this goal, more funds need to be pulled in and the manufacturing capacities has to be increased multifold. To satisfy this humongous capital requirement, companies go public through an IPO or initial public offering. Shares of the company for the first time is made available for the public to purchase through a stock exchange. Early investors use an IPO as an exit strategy to exit their positions. Their exit depends on the lockout period defined during which initial promoters of the company cannot unload their positions. This is done to protect the price value of the stock from dropping considerably after an IPO. The year 2019 saw a lot of companies going public among which Uber and Lyft were from the ride hailing service category. Uber went public on May 10th of 2019 and its lockout period was 180 days post IPO. Uber's shares fell to an all-time low and dropped almost 8.7% after the stock lockout period expired. There is a lot of buzz around an IPO so I would urge each individual investor to be cautious. It's better to be late than to be wrong. I'm not a big fan of investing in IPOs as being a conservative investor I would wait for the companies to prove themselves before jumping on board. To put everything that we have discussed so far into perspective, let's consider Facebook's evolution from a startup to a publicly traded company. Facebook was initially launched in 2004. During the pre-seed funding stage, funds came from founders Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo Savo. Seed funding came from Peter Thiel in 2004 from which Facebook raised half a million dollars. One year later, in 2005, through Series A funding, Facebook secured a venture capital investment of $12.7 million from Axel Partners. In April of 2006, Facebook closed its Series B funding. This included $27.5 million from a number of venture capitalists, including Greylock Partners and Merita Capital. 2007 marked the entry of Microsoft with Series C funding of $240 million and in the same year, Hong Kong billionaire Lee Ka Shing invested $60 million as well. At that time, Facebook did not go for Series D funding, instead filed for an IPO on February 1, 2012. Since then, there has been no looking back for Facebook and modern stock markets continue to evolve adding more asset classes and financial products. There is no denying the fact that stock markets are and will continue to be the engine of the capitalist world. I hope this video excites you to know more about stock markets. There are hundreds of companies listed in the stock market and selecting the best companies is a tedious task. This task can be simplified by knowing what kind of an investor you want to be. We will know more about these topics in my upcoming video which will be coming out next Monday. So stay tuned by subscribing to my channel and if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. So until we see next time, thanks for watching, bye.